Welcome to The Weird Shack, the podcast that explores the weird and spooky. I'm your host, Ollie Tobbles, with my co-hosts, Reeski. Awesome. Siege. Hello there. And Jordan with Stick. Hello. And today we're talking about the Enfield Poltergeist. The first question, Reese, is it true that you once lived inside the house? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, <laughs> it is not true that I once lived inside the house. Um, I lived not too far away from it, and whenever I'd go to my grandparents, it would always be like going past the road while the house was down. <laughs> okay, okay. Chinese uh, fish and chip shop we used to go to as well it was also <laughs> quite nearby, so we <laughs> come in there, you'd sort of never sit. Uh, did you ever? Did you ever look in the house and like? <laughs> see if it was like did you know it was haunted um not not for a while no i only knew about it after uh, i'd moved away from enfield oh okay okay so you you never really walked past and was like oh ghosts let's have a look no not really no (laughs) 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 okay okay Um, when we said when we said chinese i thought you were gonna say a Chinese couple lived there, and I was like, okay, why is that relevant? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the Enfield Poltergeist uh, was a claim of a n- supernatural activity at 284 Green Street. Where did you live, Reese? 280? <laughs> uh, no, I used to live on a. I can't even remember the name of the oh, okay. road. Um, it's like Brims Down? Ord- Ordnance Road or something, which oh, is okay. like... Because it's like on one big like main road what goes from like Ordnance Road to like fucking Waltham Cross. Right. And from the other direction it goes, it's like Edmonton Way. Right. Which is like, yeah, Brims Down is pretty much all where my nan and granddad live. That's all that area. Was this the same house that, like, you said was haunted? On oh, my nan and granddad's one, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, um, 284 Green Street. Uh, it was a council house in Brimsdown, Enfield, London. England. England. Uh, England. Between 1977 and 1978. Two sisters aged 11 and 13. Right? It was involving two sisters aged 11 and 13. Um, In August 1977, uh, a single parent, Peggy Hodgson. Peggy? Peggy Hodgson. Peggy. 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 Called the Popo to her rented home (laughs) in Enfield, Mm. claiming she had furniture moving around. Mr. Popo came in. Mm, move the furniture around. No, she cl- she rang them. Trained them. <laughs> um, she claimed that the furniture was moving around, and two of her four children said that they heard knocking sounds on the wall. Mm. Um, children including Margaret, age thirteen, and Janet, age eleven. Uh, the police constable said they saw a chair wobble and slide, but could not determine any movement. Um, like couldn't determine what was moving it um he checked for like hidden wires uh but like no crime was committed so like what could they do um but loads of people thought it was the girls playing pranks like mm. be like good good meme mm. um uh, I'd like to do that. <laughs> um people later claimed they heard uh disembodied voices loud noises Toys being thrown, overturned chairs, and the children levitating. So, yeah. They Um, heard them levitating. They heard them levitating. Well, you can't do it like a... (laughs) Well, that's like... (laughs) (laughs) That's like a stereotypical, like, alien abduction noise. So, this is what... This is what the mum saw, the girls claimed, and friends and families claimed. Mm. Um, Over a period of 18 months... Um... Neighbors, psychic researchers, and journalists came to check it out to see if they could see, like, see anything happen, so they could like record it and stuff. Um, they said they saw 
furniture moving on its own accord, objects being thrown across the room, the daughters levitating several feet off the ground. One man, <laughs> one man, one man came forward saying he got hit by a flying slipper. Mm. <laughs> the ultimate um, weapon. Mm, the ultimate weapon for a ghost. Mm. Um, a, a female officer said they saw a chair levitate. Mm. Um, many also heard and recorded, like, knocking noises and a gruff voice. Like, they heard, like, a... <laughs> when they recorded stuff, and they were like, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> um, it was said that more than 30 people had heard or seen something in the house, but it was confirmed in about 17 interviews, like, on, like, BBC or magazines or whatever, newspapers. Mm. Um, but, like, out of the 30 people that claim to have seen something in the 17 that are interviewed, could the girls really trick all of them if they were 13 and 11? If they're adults? And yeah. some of them are, like, proper researchers and stuff. Easily. Mm. <laughs> yeah, clearly. <laughs> um, the mum didn't know who to call, really. They were like, oh shit, what, who don't call? So they called um, the Ghostbusters. <laughs> nah, they didn't. I was about to say that. Uh, <laughs> they called um, uh, the Society of Psychical Research. Psych? Psychical? I don't know, psych, like that. Um, one member and a paranormal investor. Investor? Investigator. <laughs> I'm going to invest in this ghost. <laughs> Bye, um, bye, 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 Sal. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> called, called Maurice. Um, um, I can't read sometimes, alright? It's past all these bad spelling, alright? Buy Bitcoin, <laughs> said the ghost. <laughs> um, yeah, so the paranormal investigator was called Maurice Gross. Right? Uh, he claimed that he was dealing with the, the best case of the century of, like, poltergeists. Mm. Uh... Maurice and his partner, Guy Lyon, with a Y. Mm. Um, Guy Lyon Playfair, he was called. Pretty cool name, pretty cool name. Um, he Guy reported... Lyon. Oh, <laughs> Guy Lyon. He, speech, reported, <laughs> <laughs> he reported over 2,000 instances of the paranormal when he like when they researched all this stuff. <laughs> um, they recorded toys moving, chairs falling over... And puddles of water forming for no reason. I think the girls are just taking a piss in the corner. Mm. <laughs> Be like, I got you, mate, joke. <laughs> One of them um, either we really bad. He's like, where'd this come up? Where'd this come from? He's really embarrassed they wet himself. <laughs> um, in November, the mother had found um, one of the daughter's beds have been upturned in the night, throwing the girls on the floor. Um... <laughs> Uh, the mother was like, "She what? found that, did she?" <laughs> uh, the girls were obviously screaming or scared or something, or they heard a bang. Yeah. But um, the mum was like, "What the fuck is this shit?" Mm. And um, she left a notepad on the table with a pen in the morning. Just, just <laughs> she was like, "Yeah, why?" Right. Um, and <laughs> when she woke up, uh, there was writing on the notepad saying, um, "I will stay in the house. Don't show this to anyone, or I get angry." <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was it was written in her child's handwriting, yeah. which she thought was a bit weird. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, uh, the mother started giving the girls Valium to help them sleep. Cash. Mm. Um, because the girls started sleeping in the corner of the room from fear <laughs> of getting flipped out of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and this bit of the story is really weird. Um, a Brazilian psychic came <laughs> that same month, hmm. and just um, all he did was help the family calm down. <laughs> That's literally That's all, they all do. he did. <laughs> yeah. he's like made them feel better about everything. Yeah. They were like, "Oh, I feel better now." Yeah. Um, they they he, he encouraged them to return the stone lion to the pub, and they felt <laughs> a lot better. Yeah. Um, in December. Janet started acting weird, speaking in a weird voice like she was possessed. Mm. Um, she started drawing really violent and fucked up drawings, and um, she was found sleepwalking most of the nights. 
Um, once, once Maurice tried to get the poltergeist to talk through Jane, uh, he reported and he got um, pretty much just um, whistling and barking noises coming from her. <laughs> um, yeah, and then 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 she started. It's a dog ghost. <laughs> and then she started she started talking like an old man so she was like alright how's it going <coughs> oh, mate I'm a dog <laughs> this is what dogs sound like <laughs> so um yeah I've got the audio right here mm. unless it's been taken down within mm. the last month mm. so I will put it in the podcast area alright Sounds good. And we shall review it. Yes. Oh, um. Alright, Mark. Alright, I've got it. I guess you want to do a countdown so you can actually see yeah. the video. Yeah. yeah. Alright, everyone ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one play. Let me hear you say my name. Come on, let me hear you say my name. <laughs> That's not my name. That's a family dog, isn't it? That's not my name. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Shut the fuck up, who's that dude? Now, if you squeak the bed, I can't hear you talking. <laughs> now, say Dr. Bellon. Come on. Come on, say it for me, Dr. Bellon. Dr. Bellon. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's good. Come on. Shut up, there you go. I'm 72 years old. I come from doing right, great job. Is he and I have right near the church <laughs> where Rina lives. I've got um, Sissy on. All my friends come from there as well. And we all make a game and go to the pub and then we walk with me in your house. Because I used to live here, and I will tell you the law, and if you don't send anyone else, the sentence to her and Mr. Blayback. <laughs> okay. I want you to tell me whether you remember what happened to you when you died. Just before you died and just after you died. <laughs> I've not listened to this before. I hate it. Hey, you danced the radio. Danced it. Sorry, Bill, can you say that again? Under the radio downstairs? Mm. Did it say sorry for your canister? Again, please. <laughs> That's some interesting hey, dance capture. The radio yeah, the captions are useless, mate. Right, there are a handle. Thanks ever so much. Why can't Janet fool you? 
I don't love I'm you. I'm invisible. You're invisible? Why are you invisible? <laughs> So much you hang out as tea. Mm -mm. <laughs> Did any friends go with you? Spell out goose. Yes, all of them. All the dogs, 68 dogs. So what do you got 68 dogs <laughs> 58 dogs? 68 dogs. No, they, they can protect me. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they can bite you, idol. How can we kill you, Bill? You could shoot me off. <laughs> now how do we how can we shoot you if we can't see you Bill? <laughs> Fuck me into God. Sorry, I didn't hear that, Bill. Fuck me into God! By praying to God. By <laughs> praying to God. So what you're saying is we could get rid of you by praying to God. Yes. Sounds like Chris's sneezes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Going with that image, she reminds me of Tom Rector. Oh, man. <laughs> He's a pirate, mate. So, oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah. I've got 68 dogs. Oh, Jesus, that was funny. <laughs> Oh. Why has he got so many fucking dogs? Why well, have you got so many dogs, Bill? <laughs> to, to, protect to, shot. <laughs> to protect me so I don't get shot. Oh, Alright, Bill. Why 68 though? With like a few I've got 68 dogs. <laughs> strange, not strange. 69, not 67, but 68. Are you so, sure, um, Bill? Did, did you count them recently? Yeah, I've definitely got 68. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, so Janet was apparently like good at trickery. <laughs> um, they set up. <laughs> Fucking hell! They set up a camera in her bedroom without her knowing. <laughs> when and was this recorded, by the way? When? What year was this? This was. 1977-ish. Right, 70s, okay, yeah. Late 70s. I was looking at the picture and I was like, what's this fucking room? It feels that's, very late. That's one of the, like, images that she was getting levitated in front of people. Well, that mm. she just jumped off the bed to me. <laughs> yeah, it does look mm. like that. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they put up a camera in our room. Mm. And without telling her and stuff, she and was very good they, at trickery. They caught her. They caught her like bending spoons and attempting to like bend bars, iron bars, I guess, from like the bed and stuff. Or mm. I don't know if they had like a bar window frame because of the situation and stuff. But she like she was caught bending spoons and stuff. Mm. Um. So. Uh, Gross had observed um, Janet banging a broom handle on the ceiling and hiding his tape recorder. Mm. According to his partner Playfair, um, one of Janet's voice she called Bill display displayed a habit of suddenly changing the topic, which was mm. also a habit that Janet had. Right. Um, uh, Janet and Margaret had admitted to pranking some of the journalists. But um But uh Gross and Playfair compelled the girls to uh retract the confession. Mm. Um they were like taking the piss out of basically by loads of people for being easily duped. Mm. But um another paranormal researcher came in called um Melbourne Christoph. Um, he went over to London, thought it was all fake, and come to the conclusion it was just kids being nutters. Mm. Um, on <laughs> on um, the mum's birthday, January the 15th, 
the oldest daughter came out of the bathroom crying, saying someone had wrote shit on the wall using shit itself. <gasps> <laughs> um, Anything but shit itself. <laughs> on the same day, Peggy, mum, saw an apparition of a man standing on the stairs. Mm. Uh, two famous investigators came, Ed and Lorraine Warren. Mm -hmm. Both were convinced it was all true. Eventually, Janet stopped talking to dead people and claimed she couldn't remember any of it, of, of like being possessed and stuff. Mm. Um, lots of people said that Janet's levitating photo could have been uh, fake and it could be just a <laughs> mid jump thing. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> if she was yeah. like lay, if she was laying down like a plank yeah. type thing, you'd be like, oh yeah, that that looks like levitation. It just looks like she just jumped off the bed. <laughs> yeah. Um, the the girls are like middle aged now, mm. and um, still to this day they claim it's all true. Mm. So yeah, that's what I got. Sounds like a uh, uh. like a Monty Python sketch. <laughs> <laughs> I got sixty eight dogs. <laughs> Why have you got sixty? I like I like his response. Why have you got sixty eight dogs? <laughs> 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 why, Bill? Why? Well, the shot we like... get shot. <laughs> like, such... that whole thing. Like, like, just think about the practicality of keeping sixty-eight dogs. <laughs> that ain't possible. <laughs> but also, Based on that alone, a child died. A child made that shit up. Only a child would say a man had sixty-eight dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but also, also, the he was he died downstairs apparently in the chair. Mm. It was only a small like. He, he said he went blind, house. didn't he? He's like, oh, I went blind. I was sleeping in a chair. Yeah. Oh, he just he saw an image apparently, and then he like died on the chair. Mm. But um, yeah. So um, also he also said <laughs> he had sixty eight dogs, so he couldn't get shot whilst he was being invisible. <laughs> and then yeah, he yeah. said about praying to God to get rid of him. Yeah. You can shoot him if you pray to God. <laughs> <laughs> hey God, I pray to you. I need to shoot Bill. He's got sixty-eight dogs, mate. It's the only way to deal with him. Uh, <laughs> is that right? Can you give me that power? All right. Cheers, God. Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. But um, Ed and Lorraine Warren researched it and stuff, and they would they would like sure it was true. So the Warrens, that's they're the ones that like the films. Yeah, yeah, on. and they're the the ones who did Annabelle stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, right? they're the ones that they're, they're the ones that have Annabelle in the museum, yeah, in their museum. So, I I don't know. I think like, is there like any video recording? They said that they put a camera, or um, I just think it's kind of weird because it's also it could just be those two guys initially went around and were like, "Hey guys, hey hey family." Maurice. We've got a plan here. If you play yeah. along, we can probably make money out of this. Yeah. You know? Because that at the end of the day, it's fame. And I, I think people claim, claim? They claim fame. Um, and I think that's part of the reason. Like, if Because I, I don't know. I, I'm not convinced by any of that. So I reckon if they are still claiming it's true to this day, it's because they get, you know, they're still known for it. Mm. You know? it's, I don't know. Yeah, it is weird. I mean, uh, I don't know. What did the Warrens do to like convince them it was real? Did they like really talk about that? I don't know. It's There's in, like uh, a whole thirty-minute thing. Yeah. But obviously, we can't review that. It's like all of the footage. Right. So there's more stuff to like look at. Yeah. And... Uh, this is the real actual footage taken from the true case of the Enfield podcast, Morris and Gross and researchers in London, England. Mm. So there is a whole thing, but it's 35 minutes long. Maybe that's something we could watch like in between. Talk yeah. About next time. Um, Part two. But, yeah. I, I don't know. I've, I've, the fact that they were saying how the girl had these like habits in the way she talked and then those were carried onto the ghost was kind of like okay yeah you know that doesn't make any sense um i'm trying to think of what that's a a symptom of 
a, a symptom, like just changing the subject for no reason. Um, maybe it's like a. I, I want to say it's like an. Is it an autism thing, Joe? Do you know? You know, like if someone like when they're talking, they just like randomly change the subject. Is it like a form of bipolar? Is it like a form of like autism or something? Maybe ADHD, something like that, where you can't focus on a particular thing. Yeah. Yeah, Asperger's. Or it could be multiple personality. If it, they actually genuinely do believe that they. Oh, yeah, it's not called multiple personality. What's it called now? It, oh, it might be bipolar, you know. Huh? Dissociative <laughs> identity disorder. Yeah. That's a politi politically correct term. So uh, what's, her, what's her one's thoughts? I think it's probably um, she had some sort of um, mental disability that or disorder. Um, she just thought it was fun. Either she, she thought it was fun, she genuinely believed that she had a second personality. Um, because what with that condition, it's common for you to have personalities that aren't the same age, the same gender as you. Um, so that could be the German. I, I mean, it, it'd be interesting to see what she's like today. I would, yeah. I would wonder if she still has these traits. Maybe like sometimes she does go into that personality. I don't know. It'd be it'd be interesting. But I suppose they're they're quite secretive about it. It's kind of like one of those things where you don't really want to add to it because if you do, you're sort of dismissing it. Uh, also, there, is a, there is a seven minute say. video of the girls now speaking mm. in 2006 about the Conjuring 2 film. Mm. Should we have. Mm. Do, you want, do you guys want to watch that? I got mm. last. Sounds like shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they're talking right. about a film which is nothing really good. Mate, it's We could watch it there. It might be funny, Reese. I've never even seen a Conjuring, <laughs> so. No, good films, Chris. Either. I like him. I like him. They're just about the the Warrens, basically, the Conjuring films, right? Like, the various different things they did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think that the thing is with a lot of these incidents, I think there is, like, logical explanation. I think a lot of it's, like, down to mental health issues. Um, or potentially, like having gone through a form of trauma and like come like you know um experiencing that trauma in a certain way so maybe yeah. something happened to them and that was how they were dealing with i don't know it's difficult to say Did, were they like was it a single parent did they have a dad because i don't i don't think you ever mentioned the father no it just says single mother i don't know if he passed or if so, he it's mother. so it could be some sort of thing to do with that. I think it was three girls and a boy. Or just yeah, four, four girls. Kids. You said it was yeah. four kids. I remember that. Four yeah. kids. Um, mm. 13 or 11 year olds. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's interesting because the UK has never been great for uh, awareness on mental health. It's only actually kind of getting into that now. Yeah. But you know, I mean, like our parents' generation, I I've not heard of like people in our in our parents' generation like when they were younger even thinking about stuff to do with mental health, like considering the possibility of like having depression or any of that, you know. Yeah. Um. So I I think it could potentially just be a thing to do with ignorance, where um she did actually have some sort of condition. Um, and there just wasn't enough knowledge about it at the time for it to be dealt with, you know? Um, mm. th there could be a doctor out there who is her doctor and knows entirely f like what's actually going on with her and what condition she has, but obviously there's a uh, doctor-patient confidentiality, so it wouldn't be a public thing. So, <laughs> you know, there might already be the answer out there that she does generally just have some past trauma and she's that was how she dealt with it at the time. Mm. But 
it also reminds me of that thing with those girls that um, faked those pictures of fairies. Do you remember that story? Where mm. there were like these girls who they basically they cut out these pictures of fairies um, from this picture book they had and they like positioned them in like flowers in the garden they took photos of them right and they were like black and white photos it was quite a while ago and they convinced everyone that they were real um people like genuinely believed fairies were real because of these two girls so it's quite easy it seems for children to just fool a large group of people uh, <laughs> I guess if someone so, wants to believe it, they'll believe it. Mm. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if a psychic goes there, um, they're gonna tell you that it's real because if they don't, if they like dispel it, or they're basically doing themselves in. You know, they're basically saying that what they themselves do also isn't real. Yeah. If like you dismiss the existence of the paranormal as a paranormal investigator you're out of the job <laughs> so it's someone, kind of someone did do that though in the story that i read mm. someone was like the girl's tricking you mate yeah Christmas well there are really people quiet. yeah well the way i see it is it was just a couple of girls that have overactive imaginations or you know i don't know read or saw something TV show, mm. or whatever about that sort of stuff, and then decided to, you know, sort of give it a go themselves, see how far they could push it, see if they yeah. could get any sort of fame from it at all. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, when shit was getting a bit too hard to maintain and whatnot, they decided to shut it down. I don't know. Well, yeah, because the girl claimed that she didn't remember any of it, and all that stuff. That's basically saying, I'm done with this now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's just stop. Like, convenient Just, yeah like i get you know when you're young you don't really know too much you just don't want all of that sort of stuff happening you know like fame and whatever but they they knew what they were doing they wanted to mm. get some sort of attention and then obviously oh, i'm sure they further, did further than yeah. what they uh, were anticipating and <laughs> also, like, they're two children of a four-child family with a single mother. They probably want attention, <laughs> when you think about it that way. Mm. They're all probably vying for attention, because they only have one parent uh, <laughs> to get to get that attention from, so something like only... that would get you a lot of attention. It was only one girl that got, like, haunted. The other but both, like, they, like, shared a room man. together, didn't they? And they were yeah. sort of in on it together. Like, I mean, if she was making it up, the other girl knew about it. You know, yeah. there's no way she didn't. Um, like, I wouldn't yeah, be surprised yeah. if the other one was sort of like helping to maintain the lies. Mm, mm. Mm. Like, but how mm. would how would a little girl of thirteen throw their voice like that that deep? Like, I get it, I get it. it could I, be I don't possible. think it's that hard. Right. If yeah, if, if it is, easy. if it is like a second personality as well, that's a very common thing. Yeah, true. That's very common with that disorder with um, associative personality disorder that's very common um that they have very distinct like very different voices that you wouldn't think is capable of that person um but yeah it, it's a very odd one um <laughs> but i i don't know it feels it definitely feels like a child made it up because who would in their right mind say that yeah i'm a guy called bill i got 68 dogs like yeah all right mate sure you have <laughs> true, true. <laughs> That's like that's Hell, like hellhounds. That's like a playground lie, mate. Oh yeah, my dad's well cool. He's got sixty-eight dogs. Yeah, sure he has, mate. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Chris? What's your thought? Well, uh, I'm gonna kid myself. I know the horrible little things. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's just little shits being little shits. You know the life of a thirteen, year, eleven year old daughter. Well, mm. I will do one day. I don't look forward to it. Whoa. A daughter. What are you going to have a daughter? Awful. You have a awful daughter? little two, troglodyte. Two so. <laughs> yeah. Chris is having a daughter. He's announced it now. <laughs> Maybe one day. Um, <laughs> um, nah. Well, I just think it's quite kids interesting, Chris. Shit, cause, you know, so. Well, Chris, yeah. when you were a kid, you had a uh, paranormal experience. How old were you when you saw the Red Man? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just like they don't. I don't remember. Is <laughs> there a similar age to that, though? Uh, was it like early teens 
No, I'm pretty sure I was younger than that. I think I was like five or something. Yeah. I can't remember off the top of my head. But but obviously, I can't it's remember. It's quite, it. it's just like an interesting thing, obviously. Yeah, people you could kind think of you were bullshitting. Them. True, I was a little yeah. shit as a kid. So. Mm. Were you bullshitting? Oh, I don't, I don't know if I was bullshitting. I can't remember. So. Oh, <laughs> coincidence. Yeah, see. They remember. couldn't remember either. I think a lot of it comes to these kids are going through, you know, all the developing, essentially, you know. So, yeah. and obviously as things are developing, it goes wild sometimes, so. Mm. Yeah. I mean, with Chris, I understand more, because if he was, like, not even in his teens yet, I could very easily be like, yeah, you probably wouldn't remember that. But they were, like, what, in their early teens? Yeah. I feel like I remember most of the stuff from my early teens, you know, it's not like I would forget that easily. I remember. Because as you say, that is, like, a very developmental period where you're sort of becoming an adult. So, yeah, it's kind of one of those things where you're actually quite aware of what's going on, you know? Do, do you remember when that show, Most Haunted, was at, like, the height of its <laughs> sort of fame during the day? Mm -hmm. I, I remember, mm -hmm. like, making some uh, bullshit recording um, when I lived <laughs> in the old farmhouse. Of uh, I'd walk around with my phone camera mode on, like, negative filter or whatever, where it's like, all, like, weird black and white -y sort of thing. <laughs> And I remember using my shadow as like a ghost hand, showing it to my uh, stepdad at the time. He thought it was real, so he phoned up Most Haunted and uh, said, I have the best footage, I want to sell it to you. And they were they were mm. going to like review it, basically. And uh, I remember doing all that specifically so we could buy central heating in this farmhouse because it was freezing cold. <laughs> that was my main purpose of doing it, uh, just to get central heating. I mean, that, that's it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, when you're a kid, when, when you're a teenager, all you care about is Central Ian, so any excuse to, <laughs> any excuse to get money for Central Ian, mate. Right? <laughs> that's what those girls were thinking, they're like, that, it's that fucking was, COVID, that, that was my first mobile oh. phones, I used to love playing around with that, an old Motorola, you know. Oh, it's times. fucking cold in it. You know what? I'm gonna pretend to be this guy King Bill who's got 68 dogs. You go along with it. I reckon I can get money for Central Eaton. Yeah, uh, good point. Good times. <laughs> oh man, good times. I like that story, Chris. <laughs> in the end, we couldn't modify it like that anyway because it was a historically graded building anyway, so we couldn't do any modifications or anything like that. Uh, right. So I went cold anyway. I uh, used to just wear an extra jumper, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm still cold. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's like, I used to live in a shed, mate. It was fucking cold. Mate, your shed was like the pimp shack. It was amazing. It was like the it weird wasn't. shack. <laughs> Not the weird shack, but... It was the, it was the original weird shack <laughs> in my old shed that I lived in. I remember the stories of all your spooky spiders you used to have in there and slugs and whatnot. Oh, the slugs were the fucking worst. <laughs> the amount of times I've, I've stepped on slugs barefoot when I was living in there. Uh, yum, yum. Fucking revolting. You yeah, think stepping on slugs is bad? Do it barefoot. <laughs> yeah, when you was talking about like the um, you know kids can. I can't remember. No, that, well, I can't remember what you were saying. Being trucker like, dies. <laughs> I remember like a lot of my sort of like ghostly experiences well when I was younger, but that was also yeah. when I lived. Up country in like pretty much in Enfield. What when you live next door mm. to the house? I lived well, about mm, like ten minutes well. away. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I had obviously one of my nan and granddads, which I've talked about before. Mm. Always felt weird in that house before that, but yeah, that night was worse. Um, <laughs> and when I lived in Enfield, um. We lived in a f two bed flat. My parents had the small room, and me and my brothers all had the big room. Uh, how uh, many, how one... many brothers do you have, Reese? At the time, I had two. Oh, okay. Jack wasn't <laughs> in the picture yet. Yeah, Jack wasn't even in the. Oh, uh, yeah, good point. Or in the pond or thing. It was, a, it was a twinkle in your dad's eye. No, it probably wasn't. <laughs> was even it in that. the what? What did you say in the pond? <laughs> Fuck knows what I said. I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't in the um, pond yet. <laughs> but, <laughs> anyway, so um, they didn't shut them back yet. So anyway, the um fucking one night, my mum woke up, woken up in the night, and um, saw, pretty much saw an old guy on the end of her bed, mm. telling her Was to check on me and my brothers. 
she thinks it might have been her granddad or something. I think I remember you telling me this once, actually. Yeah. Hmm. So well, then, then... Um, they came in and checked on us. We was fine. And then what happened in the end was my t parents came into the room with me and my one of my younger brothers, whereas my older brother then went into the small room. Mm -hmm. But that big room always had something wrong with it. Like, I was on my bed once with this ball. One of those balls, had like a face moulded into it so it wouldn't roll properly. Mm. Yeah, you told me this. I dropped it on the floor on the carpet so it would have rolled away from my bed. But instead it rolled under my bed. Ooh. Uh, went looked under it and the face was looking at me so I was like, yeah, no, like, stay under there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, New Year's Eve or New Year's or whatever, I think. Uh, friends, family were around. Bang on the wall behind us. Went in, shoe print on the wall. No one else had been in there. But that room was just... That, that place was just weird in general. Mm. So it might just be Enfield, seen as like part of London, you know. Just have a Maybe, bit, bunch yeah, of, like, yeah. energy. So as yeah. I say, a lot of energy helps to, like, fuel that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Like, also, like, a lot of people have died there. Like, it's a very... It's because it's, like, London that's always been a populated area. Yeah. And there's, there's always been a lot of people there. Yeah, as so, but when I moved the first time to another place in London called Bourne Wood, um, my bed used to have wheels on it. And mm. for, like, the... F until I took the wheels off, my bed always ended up moving into the middle of the room. Mm. So I ended up taking the wheels off and like, yeah, made sure that never happened again. Because mm. <laughs> it was, it was, it was like always perfect center of the room. Mm. And you'd think, oh, there must like the floors must be any dented or whatever, but no, it was perfectly level and fine. Always woke up middle of the room on the bed. Yeah, weird. It was your dad pulling a prank. prank on you. <laughs> it's just a prank, bro. See, I would have agreed, but um, I, I had a lock mm. on my door. Mm. So I didn't know he didn't come in for your window. Because <laughs> it was a too short, too like story place. So, can, you imagine, uh, yeah. can you imagine me just dad doing that just to fuck with him? I'm gonna climb in a window in two stories building. I'm gonna climb in just to move Reese's bed so he gets scared. Well, the thing is, like, kids are meant to be more like susceptible to seeing paranormal things, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, but why? Is there a rule written somewhere for that? Why? I wonder it... if it's like the underdevelopment of the brain. Because like when you think about it, dogs are supposed to be very susceptible to that sort of thing. Yeah. Obviously their brains aren't as complex. Dogs, cats, babies, young kids. Yeah, nothing. so maybe like as you grow older and your brain develops, you lose that ability <laughs> that like, you're more susceptible to that. I don't know. Maybe that's it. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Mm. Yeah, unless it's like some major activity or whatever that happens, probably not, not gonna notice it. Yeah. So, do you Weird. think it's bull then? Yeah. I don't know. I, I completely yes. There could be there could be some truth in it, but yeah, it it could be that like one thing happened, and they just ran with it. You know, yeah. Like I said, for fame. You know that that is a big driving point. For people. Too much. P people do a lot of stupid shit just to get a bit of popularity and be in the paper. Well, yeah. back in that time. Nowadays, it's be a, a popular video on YouTube or tit or be a, a TikTok or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know that it's always been a thing that people have craved attention, and especially like as I said earlier, those two girls in that with four children, a single mother you're going to be craving that attention and if that's something that gets it then you're going to go with it right i guess so yeah but one of the one of the one of the uh sisters were quite old they must have been about 17 mm. so janet was like i think third youngest yeah. and then the sister was the youngest so 11 and 13 Right. So the youngest surely would have got more attention than everyone else, surely. It depends. Yeah. 
It really depends on the dynamic and what they're all doing, you know? Yeah. And who gets more attention. Like, yeah. if the mother's, like, taking the oldest to go somewhere every day and the kids are like, oh, yeah, you got to walk to school. They don't, you know, they're going to get less time spent with the parent and they're going to want something for getting attention. I don't know. Yeah, see, <laughs> as um, someone who, like, experience paranormal stuff and believe in it mm. I am still like highly skeptical of others with mm. what other they... stories yeah yeah because like, yeah. obviously once you've had your own experience with it that's like you can sort of slightly tell yeah you can understand how people are bullshitting yeah yeah I want to get something that's why I want to go out well, I had that paranormal experience when I was a kid, and I don't remember it very well. I don't have, like, any memory of it. Like, much like with Chris, like, I don't remember it. But I, I think I was, like, not even ten yet when mm. that happened. And they say that so. you're supposed to remember significant moments of your life. You'd think encountering something like that, you definitely would remember it, don't you? <laughs> well, also, you do block out traumatic stuff. Because mm. um, I, I had a bunch of stuff happen when I was a kid that I had blocked out and never understood until I was older and I was like oh wait that's the reason like when I was a kid I was scared of skeletons uh like basically all of my childhood I was terrified of skeletons never knew why yeah uh and it's because I blocked out this memory of my dad who's a prick uh (laughs) he used to breed um ferrets and he showed me one day he was like he had recently got because he used to go out hunting and he'd, he'd shoot a bunch of rabbits and then he'd use those as food for the ferrets so he had fed them the rabbits and he'd showed me like oh it's a rabbit it's dead I'm, I'm feeding it to the ferrets the next day he showed me a rabbit it was the carcass and it was basically just the bones and like muscle holding it together right. he showed me this skeleton I was like a tiny child I was fucking terrified and I blocked that memory out. And that was the reason I was scared of skeletons. And I didn't understand that until I was much older. And, I, you know, my mum was like, oh, the reason you were scared of skeletons was because of this thing that happened. But, and then that suddenly brought it back. And I, I remember that perfectly now. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting how you can block these things out. Um, it's just how the human brain copes with trauma a lot of the time. Yeah. Is it just pretends it doesn't exist. But then it still comes out in other things. But yeah. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird to think about. But then that could also explain them not remembering these events, I guess. But I don't know. It's weird. Well, we will we'll start going out more. Mm. And we can um do that pub interview thing. That did we you go to, to that tunnel? Yes, I did. How was that? Um yeah, it was pretty cool actually. Um, it was, I thought it was going to be a lot lamer than what it was, but it wasn't like awesome. Just give, give a bit of context to what it was. So, ooh. is that my son? <laughs> um, it was a, it was like a, it was a good mm, delivery lorry's length tunnel. Mm. It, it had recently been furbished, restoned, and stuff, but um, it was an old bridge that this highway man used to rob people and hang them off the, the bridge. Right, so that's like the story behind it. Yeah. But he also. There was like. The, the military with the horses used to go across there, so like. You can like you're meant to hear the horses stomping across like stubble, cobblestone and stuff, right? And like it's just meant to be just weird noises and stuff. It's called like the Devil's Arch or something. Mm. But we went at night. We didn't really hear anything. It like there was lots of like stalag stalactites, stalagmites. What's the ones that drew down? Stalactites go down. Yeah, there was like this weird yeah. like crumbly stalagmites. Tights. Tights. That was going, going down. down. Yeah. Yeah. It was weird. <laughs> it was just like this weird, like, 
dusty crystals that are just hanging off the yeah, top. Yeah, it's, it's like sediment. Yeah, that's that's how it happens. It's yeah. like water with the sediment from the bridge yeah. forms into those sort of shapes. No, that was quite yeah. cool. There's like there's an area up there that you could actually camp up there. Hmm. Out of the way. So maybe one. What was it called? Is it? We say it was the Devil's Tunnel. It was called like the Devil's Arch or the Devil's Tunnel yeah. or something. They've they've always got that name, haven't they? Yeah. There's always like it's it's always the Devil or it's like the Hell's Gate or something yeah. like that. Like I think in America, there's so many places that are just called like the Hell's Gate or like the Portal to Hell or something. There's loads of those sort of things. But, but yeah, yeah, we should it's definitely go out and stuff, explore. Mm. I'll be up for that. Well, as restrictions start to go down, then yeah, well, the end of the month's meant to be six people can meet. Mm, yeah. So then, <laughs> okay, right. some spooky shit. We should probably call it here then. Yeah. yeah anyone? Anyone got anything to add? to add? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. What? Well, what would everyone like to do when lockdown happens? When it stops happening. Go camping. Yeah. Miss wild camping. Wild camping. Go camping. Yeah. We could have if we do go camping, we'd definitely like try and record stuff and Yeah, definitely. Like, I've got my tripod. I've got um USB ring lights. I've got my camcorder, yeah. it's not amazing, but it works. Well even just recording stuff with phone and like yeah. cutting stuff together could work. Yeah. Well. We could do that. But yeah. No, it should be good. Don't we know. can it's crazy how many like beasts of our thing in the UK. Blank. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Dartmoor's one, Beast. Bobmen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can explore those as well. There's Owl Man. We can check out um, yeah. Kennel Vale. Do the pub interview stuff. We can get loads of stuff done. It'd be quite fun. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be, be nice. nice to meet up again. One day. And we also we could do we could do. We could record VR chat and do in world VR chat podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be an interesting thing to <laughs> try out. That'd be quite cool, yeah. yeah. We could have like our four views yeah. in four. each corner of the box kind of thing talking. Yeah. Mm. So you can like see all the others yeah, their characters cool. well. I think <laughs> the only problem with that is that we might have to find like characters which aren't similar to us yeah 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 that's fine we might have to try and look at making our own yeah. character models and whatnot. Mm. lots of plans lots of plans for the weird shack yeah we should start doing like recording phasmophobia doing that as the weird shack as well yeah we did say about doing that yeah. didn't we I weird think, shack, I think weird we shack just gaming streamed it we just streamed it a couple yeah. of times but not gonna actually did uh... I mean I've I think me and you streamed at the same time doing it, so technically yeah. you could make a video from that cutting our perspectives together. True, true, yeah. If you really wanted to, you could just download those videos and edit it. Yeah, we should definitely um, do that again. Is that Phasmo yeah, and at some point. Phasmo and stuff, yeah. VR Phasmo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the interesting. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Mm. Alright, let's call it here then, boys. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, cheers for joining us, viewers. Uh, Thanks, viewers. Thanks, shackers. shackers. <laughs> now that you've watched an episode, you're a shacker and you have no way out. Cheers, man. I've got 68 dogs. <laughs> I'm invisible, I can't be shot. You can't shoot me unless you pray to God. <laughs> My 68 dogs will block all the shots. You, you better have 68 bullets. <laughs> you, that may take out my dogs, that ain't me, mate. What about 69? Because he's going to shoot him as well, ain't he? Yeah, and you've got to be perfect with each shot. I mean, yeah. you got to, you got to finish off my dogs with each, one shot each. Grab and the then neck. you got to get me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be sat in my chair, and I might be blind. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't matter, because I've got 68 dogs. <laughs> That's how he died, mate. Somebody <laughs> actually beat him <laughs> and his dogs. He put, yeah, he probably died from not being able to actually afford the money to like to feed sixty eight dogs. They probably just ate him in his sleep because <laughs> <laughs> they were fucking starving. Because it's sixty eight, the poor bastard. <laughs> All right, see you later, Shackers. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Mm. <laughs>